Hello, my name is Alexis. I work at the University of Melbourne's Centre for Cancer Research in Melbourne, Australia. I would like to start by acknowledging the Wurundjeri and Bunurong peoples as the traditional owners of the unceded land on which we work, learn and live. I've presented at Cedar World conferences in the past on how we're using Cedar Well on Illumina Connected Analytics platform and then also presented a more technical presentation on using TypeScript for writing Cedar Well JavaScript expressions. Today I'll be speaking on some of the unofficial CWL side projects I've been working on over the past couple of months, and that entails writing JSON schemas for CWL and CWL inputs. Uh, so in this talk, we'll touch on, uh, first of all, what CWL is uh, from a philosophical standpoint, uh, what is JSON schema, and why does that exist, the process of auto-generating a JSON schema for CWL, and to prevent any sort of legal battles, I've made my own logo down the bottom that has really no resemblance to any of the previous logos seen in this presentation. Um, and then finally, how to create a JSON schema from a CWL well input. Again, don't go look at the logo uh, too closely. Uh, for those of you that use meme formats. So what is CWL, philosophically speaking? Is CWL a programming language? Like Python, CWL has an interpreter. Given an input, we can expect a certain output, like a programming language. And programming languages usually have variables, but we don't really have these in CWL. Using ChatGPT to define a programming language, one phrase I got was, allow humans to communicate with computers by providing a set of instructions that computers can understand and execute. CWL well doesn't exactly provide the list of instructions to execute, does it? So no, it's not a programming language, but it is still a language. From the CWL homepage, CWL is an open standard for describing how to run command line tools and connect them to create workflows. So CWL sits closer to a configuration syntax than a programming language. Is CWL a typed language. We roughly define a typed language as having their variables defined at compile time, not run time. TypeScript and Java are great examples of typed languages. While, type, while languages like Python can be strongly typed, it depends on the developer. In non-typed languages, a variable at runtime can quite easily take the form of any type depending on the input. However, configuration languages are often strongly typed as they need to adhere to a certain structure to be interpreted. So yes, CWL is a typed language. All components types of a CWL command line tool or workflow can be determined before runtime. This is what allows CWL tool validate to fail if the syntax is incorrect. As a side note, type hinting your code will greatly improve your ability to debug along with your IDE's ability to code hint for you too. Any future developer on your code will also thank you for it. Part two, what is JSON schema? Well, let's just jump straight into it. This is JSON schema. In the example here, we have a modest 700 lines to determine the appropriate configuration syntax of any GitHub Actions workflow. This looks hideous. Rewriting the previous slide, what is JSON schema and how something so scary can be so popular? JSON schema is a specification language for JSON that allows you to describe the structure, content and semantics of a JSON instance. JSON schema, in fact, has its own JSON schema. More importantly, why? Why does this exist? JSON schema can validate JSON documents in the previous example, workflows from GitHub Actions must adhere to the schema in the example above to be considered valid workflows. JSON schemas, schemas have a wide range of use cases. API interfaces submit your data to a REST API, and before it even bothers to start processing the submission, it can first confirm that the payload you've sent is even valid. Like the example previously, JSON schema can be used for conformance of configuration languages for languages written in JSON or YAML, since YAML is just JSON with comments, 
and you can check out Jason's Schema Store or .org for examples. A bonus is IDE integrations. IDEs use JSON schemas to confirm your code looks good. So, since CWL is written in YAML, like GitHub Actions workflows, does this mean that we can create a JSON schema for CWL? So that was quite a build up. Let's get into it. Combining the thankless efforts of others to build on the CWLTS auto repository and an open NPM package, we can generate a pretty easy draft of what uh, the JSON schema should look like. And then we can use some Python code to tinker this to our uh, heart's desires. We can then link that new JSON schema to jsonschemastore.org. So this is the end result. Just imagine this keeps going for like another 7,000 lines. Things probably look a little bit familiar here. Now, let's try coding with an IDE that reads the schema. Going in with a very simple tool, the Tavix tool. If I try and add in a requirement, we see that because we have a defined list of valid CDO requirements in the schema, it auto fills as I type. Likewise, let's type in an input. It won't hint as I type in the ID, uh, as this can be of any string type. However, now it knows we're in an input parameter. As I type in label, this auto fills as it does with docs. Oh, now it's coming up with a warning. Aha, JSON schema says that because this input parameter isn't valid, because I don't have the type set yet, I think this is a really uh -huh. cool way that we can ensure that our CWL code is valid before we even leave the IDE. There's a tiny bit of setup to do with this, which I'll put up in the reference slides. Sure, JSON schema isn't the only uh, tool that people can use to write their CWL code. Uh, so another example is the Ben 10 CWL extension. And I think it, it itself has its own JSON schema as well. Um, and there are certainly some benefits to using Benton. Uh, it's very CWL specific, so it can create graphs of your CWL workflows on the fly. Um, and it can all, also even emulate your JavaScript um, and evaluate your JavaScript as well. Uh, there's certainly, uh, but I could never really get the Benton server working on my on my Windows uh, computer. Uh, and also, I like to code in JetBrains uh, for the multi-line editing. So I wasn't going to switch to VS Code just for the the, the Benton extension. Um, another thing is that the J uh, JSON scheme is generic, so it is going to work across uh, all your IDEs, um, and it will be available on all platforms too. Uh, and does have CWL 1.2 support. Yeah, this wouldn't be made possible without the work done for the CWLTS auto repo creators and maintainers Adrian Zimmer and Michael Crusoe uh, and also to the TypeScript uh, NPM schema developers as well. Uh, and then one special shout out goes to Francis Sherrod McNeut for writing the initial CWL JSON schema uh, that, that he wrote by hand, uh, which, is, which is very impressive. Uh, I've also put in the YAML file association set up for CWL on IDEs, and um, I've also linked in the Ravix Ben 10 VS Code extension URL as well. Moving on to the final part, creating a CWL JSON schema for CWL inputs. Without much introduction needed, the inputs for a CWL command line tool or workflow are also typed and in JSON format. This means for a given workflow, we should be able to make a JSON schema of its inputs. So some of the benefits uh, of creating a JSON schema for CWL inputs means that we can validate inputs before submitting jobs to remote CWL execution services. Remote engines may stage data first and then just run without any prior validation. And not all workflows are necessarily accessible to a user prior to a validation slash launch. If the JSON schema of this workflow uh, is exposed, we can use this to validate an input first before launching. A small use case we have is the ICAV2 tag-based GitHub releases we use at UMCCR for deploying our CWL workflows onto DocStore and ICAV2. I'd also like to move to Workflow Crate in the future as well. This is all done by simply pushing a GitHub tag to our CWL ICA GitHub repo and GitHub Actions does the rest. On the next slide, we'll show you the auto-generated GitHub release page that, that occurs once GitHub Actions is completed.
The documentation here is derived from the workflow itself. We generate a link for the auto doc store deployment and then provide the pipeline and bundle IDs that were generated for ICMv2. In the Illumina Connected Analytics world, a bundle is a collection of pipeline and data sets which can be shared between projects as a single asset. Uh, all of the standard visuals, inputs, steps and outputs uh, that I think I presented a couple of years ago, uh, we generate also a CWL packed file and a zip file, which is just a workflow.cwl in the top directory and everything else is in the subfolders. And finally, we have our assets at the bottom, which include the packed and zipped workflows along with our input JSON schema. So before running this workflow on ICAV2, a user can first validate their input JSON against the schema in this asset list. Otherwise, they might have to wait some time for their workflow to fail and try again. For some of you wondering why I'm basically glossing all over this and thinking, wait, this is the cool bit. I gave a similar presentation back in 2021 that involved a CWL ICA catalog. Uh, and our CWL ICA repo is public, so, so please go and visit uh, to have a look at these uh, assets yourself. Uh, on the CWL input schema generation, a special mention to Hirotaka Suotaki, who initially suggested this idea, uh, and then to my colleague, Dr. Serej Kanwa, who's been on the CWL ICA journey with me for the past few years. Thank you very much for your patience. And to the ICA v2 software development team too, thank you for actioning all the issues that I've raised with the ICA v2 pipeline API.